Hi guys! Uh, so for this video I hope to be showing you the processes behind me making my dolls. So I'll show you the clay part, or you basically sculpt the face, the painting, and then the assembling, and then the final result. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of a long video and I'm sorry for that. At first it was like three fucking hours long, which was... yeah, it... yeah. I, I, Hopefully this will get better, as I hopefully make more videos. So yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the one I'm showing you right now is one that will be turned into like a rabbit -y thing. Um, I get quite a lot of questions about the teeth. Because, yeah, apparently people seem to think they're real quite often. Which is... Yeah. <laughs> no, I got them on eBay, I got like a pack of 30, they're really easy to buy, so if you want to go buy yourself some fake teeth, do it. <laughs> they were actually really fiddly to put in the clay though, like it kept dropping it, it was, yeah. But I like the final result, I think it was worth it. Now I have a weird rabbit with a mouth in its fod. So, yeah. So after I did the mouth, I then focused on the eyelids. I wanted them to be quite... I have like a style of drawing eyes where I like to have them quite sunken in but with like massive eyelids as if they probably had either drugged up or <laughs> some plastic surgery, I don't know. But yeah, just these poor little mutated slightly boyos. and now I'm just squishing it in because this fod was too huge. So the thing about, um, I'm using a dry clay, the thing about it is it dries incredibly quickly so I kept having to like have a bowl of water next to me just to keep it not dry. <laughs> So next I looked at making the ears, um, originally they were going to be quite a lot longer but they just would not stay up. So I ended up making these smaller ears, not really, more of a rabbity face than a hair or something like that I guess. But I think they're okay, um, very difficult to get them both like symmetrical looking, so it was quite a lot of trial and error, trial and error. Because obviously I'd do one and then the other would like not attach, so I had to shorten the other one as well. And that's the little baby done. Now for him to be dried out and painted eventually. <laughs> So after they dried, um, I ended up painting them using my gouache palette. A relatively new, uh, first I was going to use acrylic, but then I really like my gouache palette, so I was like, kind of had to try and see if it would work, and surprisingly it did. I thought, because obviously it's a bit watercolory in nature, that it would just go through, but no, it worked. So this one I'm painting right now is this weird sort of gremlin-y 
third eyed boy. Uh, so, yeah. He has quite a squishy face, I think. He's very grumpy. Uh, so, for this one, I predominantly went for quite red tones, so I went with like pinks and reds. Uh, I think he has a little bit of blue under the eyes. Overall, I wanted it to be kind of just slightly mutated as most of my characters are. <laughs> and of course, before um, it dried out, I made holes in, around the edges just so I could stitch it onto the fabric later on. I know quite a lot of people use just glue, but I don't have anything strong enough, so besides, I think it'll look quite cute. Oh, for any of you wondering, the gouache palette is called Himmy, and yeah, I recommend it, it's really good. And there's a little bit of blue under the eyes. I wasn't really sure, but it kept coming up quite grey, so I had to go over it quite a few times, but it was pretty, pretty common to do. With the third eye, I know it looks bad. I do. I'm sorry. But we're just going to pretend that it looks fine. <laughs> is the rabbit one that I actually showed you sculpting. Um, I actually managed to lose all the rest of my footage of all the faces I actually ended up making so that's kind of annoying but you get the idea from just one how roughly I went about making it. So with painting this one I again sort of went for the typical creepy cute sort of thing so I went to because it's got like massive mouth that it's thought I wanted it to be kind of like cute colours, so like pinks and reds. So first I applied like a base layer. As usual I did most of the attention on the eyes and the nose so I made them particularly red just to stand out from the rest of his mouth. Getting in between those teeth was quite difficult though when I was painting the gums. I found myself accidentally painting parts of the teeth so then I'd have to rub it out. So possibly in the future I would consider making imprints of the teeth, painting them and then maybe gluing them in just to avoid that stuff. I already know how else could go against that 
without just straight up getting a finer brush, I don't know. So I ended up actually going against the sort of straight up cute pastel vibe I was going for originally. Um, I just couldn't help but make the mouse bleed all over the fucking mouth. <laughs> so we went from being a cute rabbit with a little bit of a mouth mutation to a little bit gory and creepy I guess. To be honest he looks almost more pig-like than rabbit-like, but ah, it's fine. So I have to add in the final sort of red patches and making sure all the ears are covered. I went back in um, afterwards with my Pusk pens and I think also regular paint and finished off adding the bleeding and highlights and stuff like that just to kind of brighten both of them up really. Next one is one ma I made for my friend. Um, it's sort of like a gremlin y clown creature thing. <laughs> uh, this one I decided to go much more pastely than the rad rabbit one. Um, yeah, so I wanted to be much more pastely because she likes her pinks, blues, pastels, sort of colours. And after that I added uh, some clown things because we have this thing where with VC we decided to put clown makeup on our faces for no apparent reason. But yeah, I thought that would be quite appropriate as a doll for her. But I, really, I think actually this one's shape is one of my favourites. It's just a little bit different from the regular ones but yeah. But still, I focused on um, the nose and the eyes, as usual. I just think if you add much more detail to that, it kind of lifts the whole face up. I don't know how else to explain that, but yeah. This one, I think, used the most blue out of all the dolls I made. Just for under the eyes, I think it sets off the pink quite nicely. And next I painted the horns themselves blue. I was kind of debating between giving them a, like a pink-ish grey colour, but in the end I thought blue because it would go more with the rest of the face.
pinch the little pink ears. <laughs> After I finished doing the gouache, I again went back into it with my Posca pens and also just regular felt tips. After I finished painting and letting them dry, I moved on to making uh, bodies of all these things. <laughs> so for the bodies, I decided to do like a patchwork base. Um, very fucking time consuming but I think it was worth it in the end. Uh, I used scraps of all my last projects so it's got mixtures of tops of parts of other dolls I've made. I just think it looks quite effective. Plus with the patchworks each one was slightly different which I thought was quite a nice little touch. And then each scrap from making each body would again be reused in the next doll. So to be honest, I'm quite happy with the little amount of waste I actually produced from the whole project. To get the shape itself, I um, used the same template for the head as the body because they've got quite large face plates so they needed to be quite balanced anyway. Before actually stitching them up, I decided to add like a little extra thing inside my dolls by writing little notes that will be rolled up and stitched up inside them. Obviously I've not shown all the notes in this video, but here are just like a few quite vagueish ones. <laughs> but I thought it'd be a nice touch because I'm I love writing letters to my friends and I feel like a letter that can't be read is almost but it's you're giving them the letter still, but they can't read it, I don't know. I, I just, I like the idea of that. So then they would just be put inside like so, and then stitched up. Of course I had to remember which one was which, which was interesting. A few times I was like, have I put the right one in the right one? But I think it is. So. And after that all they did is I stitched them all up, added clothes, well made the clothes. Did some final light like, details and touches and ready for the final results.
So here's the final result of two of the ones I made for my friends. I did some touch-ups with my Pusk pens, added like a cute little rabbit thingy and added a clown collar and limbs for my friend. Uh, these two are actually for sale on my Depop. I'll add a link in my thingy. <laughs> but yeah, the rabbit one has a oversized clown collar and similar to my friends I've added this sort of little snuggly weird cape thing for I think I called him P-Boy in the end. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'm sorry if this was really awkward but yeah. Hopefully we'll get better with time. If any of you ever actually watched this far, thank you very much. Have a nice day.